and welcome to episode 97 of the Fools on a Hill podcast. I am Cal and I'm joined by Yanni and Liam. As always, how are we boys? Refreshed. So, refreshed? So refreshed for you. Wow. Why That's would that be? Anyway. <laughs> uh, because we've had a break. Oh, every week. <laughs> every... every week. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad to get back to it. It's been a while. We've uh, we've had a week off. Um, mm. There's been lots of stuff that... I, I don't know what's happened, but I feel like I'm going to find out during this podcast. Um, because we've, we seem to be very... Well, I've not been busy at all. But you two seem to be very busy, so... Yeah, um, yeah so uh, we'll get right into mm-hmm. it. Um, I'm going to go... Cal, what have you been up to this week? Well, um, so you might know, I, 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 I was manager of uh, two stores in the area, regional manager. Oh. Some would say no one has called. It, no one has called me that. Um, one of them stores has closed down, not through fault of mine. Mm. Not running. Like, that was running. No, no, no. Managing that was well. that was always the plan. Uh, it closed on Sunday. Um, so, what a horrific week it's been. Um, ransacked. Oh, I've ransacked so bad. Been a big and sale, then a big sale. Yeah, mate. Everything was like you know there was like ninety quid jackets on sale for like fifteen quid. Oh wow! Which is just wow. Yeah, wee. but we had we had like shit sizes left at the end. Um, so that's been horrible having to clear the shop. I didn't work the last day. Um, Crazy. which was closed to the public. Well, there is actually a reason, Yanni, and I've not told either of you, and I'm not going to tell you on the pod. Um, it's not you know it's fine. But um, yeah, I'm not telling you now. But I, I don't know. I feel awkward bringing stuff up. Um... Go on, I'll mute. <laughs> I'll mute your mic on the recording for a second if you take it from Tells. Go on then. Uh, hang on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's hope it works. Go on, <laughs> say something. Say something. Yeah, you shouldn't be on the recording. Go on, tell us. I'm... No, we're we're, we're reacting. Oh, here. Uh, is it? Oh, that really... <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> I don't know why you... Agree- right, you're back live. I don't know why you agreed <laughs> for us to do that. <laughs> what the fuck? If anyone God, can lip know, read it's... at home... Well, and they managed to get that out of you without any lube. That is just <laughs> ridiculous. Well, you know... Um, well, yeah, thoughts. but how would you bring that up on a WhatsApp chat, you know? Uh, uh, f- not on the podcast, <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't. You, I hope, hopefully, by not bringing it up on the podcast. Uh, well, you know, yeah. hopefully, hope it's all right. Hopefully, I, I mean, yeah, it's fine. Thank well, you. I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> can't it's have much worse, right can it? <laughs> as fine as it could have gone. Um, but yeah, we're in a we're in good spirits around here. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so that's why I wasn't in on on the last day. Yanni, you insensitive prick. Um, <laughs> I thought there was uh, some real yeah, gossip all... going to happen there. <laughs> I don't know about no, you, no. Yeah, I thought some. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, you were hoping for a big downfall in my fortunes. Were you? No, I thought it was going to be something juicy. No, like. Yeah, oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, no, yeah, it's not, not, not at all. Not so juicy. <laughs> to be honest, it was a bit boring. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's what it is. Uh, but yeah, that's been, that's been my week. Pretty much dominated. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Liam, what about you? <laughs> <see that>. Um. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that really. Um, what have I been well, doing? No one knows, week? so it doesn't matter. That's a good point. That makes it harder though somehow. Um, my auntie came over this weekend. It was my mum's birthday on Friday. Um, happy birthday, Nikki. Happy birthday, birthday to Hill. you. So we surprised her. We, we invited her over <laughs> to stay for the weekend for her birthday. Um, and we surprised her by booking my auntie a ticket over from Northern Ireland. So she arrived like Friday afternoon when picked up from the airport and then went and grabbed my mum from the train station a little bit later on and uh, my auntie opened the door to my mum and it was a very lovely exchange and we had a nice little weekend together um, oh, wow. not seeing each other since healthy. last August and weren't going to see Blimey. each other till October so it would have been over a year but we've managed to split it down the middle um, for a little birthday treat um, mm-hmm. and other than that uh, I'm going camping tomorrow that's, Very nice. that's in the future though. That hasn't happened this week yet. Whereabouts? Shell Island. Oh, it's classic. So Lydia and I are just getting a nice little... Because she's off this week, whereas most schools are only off next week. 
Mm-hmm. So she's off this week and next week. Um, so we thought before everyone's off for half term, we'll go and sneak out a little trip. So that's very clever. Yeah. I would like a full comprehensive review of the state of rock and roll. No, the Portaloos. <laughs> Um, yeah. If they, if you can still you know if they still pong for about half a mile. The um, so, uh, last time I went the the toilet cavern was pretty all right you know. Oh, it really? was I can vouch for that. Yeah. Mm. Not been to Shell Island in about twelve years. Yeah, it may have it may have upped its game a little bit since you were there, Carl. To be honest. Mm. Missed those sand dunes. But I will let you know. Good old sand dunes. The sand dunes are fucking magnificent. <laughs> Um, True wonders of the is world. There, have you had house stuff done this week? Then? Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. We, uh, I have. We've finished a bunch of stuff. Because I want, it, I want an excuse as to why you've been so absent on the group chat. Yeah, oh, so, really. You know, I, 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 every now and then, out with it. I just, I, I worry that Liam's just gonna up and leave one day. <laughs> so he's gonna go to Australia for no, three days. He needs again. us too much for that. So up until sun Friday, all day Friday, pretty much up until Sunday afternoon was obviously family stuff. I'm very busy with all that. Then all of last week, pretty much, uh, first day I was in the office, and while I was in the office, someone was, we're getting all our carpets redone. So, and that bled into, I don't think it finished to like half six or something stupid, so. Um, so that was getting done. So, and then Wednesday I was off, but I was doing, um, mowing the grass, trimming the hedges, uh, staining the decking, some paint jobs around the house, no, other stuff, much. lots of stuff on that Wednesday, and then the Monday, Tuesday as well. I was doing jobs around the house and stuff. So yeah, I've been pretty busy. All it was a kind of thing of my auntie's coming over. Do she it. hadn't seen the house yet, so it's a opportunity to really get the jobs done that we hadn't yet finished. Um, I had to paint a door as well on that Wednesday. I also had to paint the loft hatch. Lots of things. So um, yeah, I think I've been pretty busy. And then obviously since I've been on Sunday, I've only been in work today and yesterday. Got a lot of work to do. Because I'm now off tomorrow till Friday, and then I won't reply much <laughs> till Friday because my phone will die at some point. Um, <laughs> so yeah, pretty off the radar. <laughs> Let me introduce you to something called portable chargers. Yeah, it's no fun, is it? No, oh, no, obviously I'm not expecting you to text us when when you're away. It's just nice to know that you you're all safe and well. I'm fine and dandy. Don't you worry about that, son. <laughs> Jolly good, mm. Yanni. You said you weren't busy, but have you done anything fun this week? Um, during the week, nothing. But um, this weekend gone, I went back to Wales. Oh, and the only place to be. The only place to be. And he says as he's uh, about to move out of. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the uh, the Saturday, I went to Port Marion, which oh, lovely. I saw that. I thought I'd never been to. And to be honest, in my mind, I haven't been there because I can't remember going. I was like, apparently like eighteen months or something. Uh, one. I hate, well, I'm going to come out with this now, I hate when people refer to past a year, uh, a child's age as a month. Like, once they're one, they're one. I think 18 months uh, is I disagree. Fair. I think 18 yeah, months I is agree. That's the only one. That is the yeah. only one, but 18 months is When it's fair. like 21 months or something, no. No, no, no. I'm past two, you're two. But eight, yeah, I yeah, feel I like when you're, when you're a weird, that young, there are de- developmental changes so much up until two. That you have to have, yeah. you've got to have those milestones. You've got to have six months. You've got to have a year. And you've got well, in that months. case, I'm like, I'm twenty years and whatever months then, because there's not really been much developmental change going on. No, I think eighteen months is is acceptable. Eighteen months is fine. How was right, Port well, Marion? If you say that to me, I'm gonna, and you have a kid, I'm gonna kick the kid in the face. Wow. Um, yeah, you've just recorded now. Mango's eighteen. Um, Mango's actually. Um, 20 months. So Get suck out. on it. <laughs> suck on mango. I don't want to. No. I don't want the dog taste in my mouth. Uh, how was Port Mary? It was fucking beautiful, mate. Mm. Uh, Italy and Wales. Little Italy. We planned to go. Little, little, Lydia and I planned to go for my birthday last year, but we didn't because, as with most plans I'm sorry. on the day, we decided against it. But um, definitely somewhere I'd like to go. It looks very beautiful. It was a very last minute thing. It was Friday evening, finished work, and I thought this weekend's going to be cracking. I can't waste it. Um, and I've wanted to go to Port Marion for ages. 
So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go. And invited my mum and dad because I didn't want to do it on my own. Um, and then we went there and we went to Port Maddox afterwards for a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, that was, that was it really. That was the highlight of the weekend. Did you have to, you have to pay to get in? I was just about to ask that, can't Yes. Right, yes. Um, £18 per person. It's a weird, it's just a weird concept, isn't it? It's like a, res- it's a, it's an attraction essentially, isn't it? It was built as an attraction. Yeah, yeah. But people do live there. I'd love to go to yep. Festival Number Six in Port Mary. Mm. There was a wedding going on when we were there. Bet that costs. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Apparently, my godfather got married there. I had no idea about that. Oh. Really did. Carl, um, I'm curious why I don't want to go to the Number One Festival. Do you know what I mean? Why would you want to go to Festival <laughs> Number Six? Seems so far down the line. It's not even top five. Mm. Is it even Maybe festival not. number six in Port Mary? Is that where that is? I've never heard that. Festival. No idea, mate. I just agree with you to make you feel better. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tim, Tim, it is a thing. Guys, Tim Burgess has something to do with it. Guys, I have a question for you both. Go on. Um, <laughs> and I thought about this earlier. And I hope that neither of you know, actually know the answer. I don't feel like either of you do actually 100% confidently know the answer to this question. What do nuts look like um, from the growth, from the ground? From the earth, I don't know how to ask this question another way. Natural, I can tell. Natural nuts, <laughs> a peanut, for example. Yeah. How does a peanut occur in the wild? And I want you to tell me what you think. I have no that's, idea. That's been the pod, ladies and gents. Uh, what? So what, are, you, are you insinuating that peanuts grow from the ground? I, I'm saying I have no idea. This is what this is why I I'm don't asking. think that's what happens. Go on, give us your hypothesis then. No googling, guys. You know we'll check in the end. But <laughs> um, I mean, I assumed they were factory made peanuts. Peanuts. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> for what? They grow in a factory. <laughs> what? Come well, no, on. like they're you know they're made of I don't know. They're made of what? No, this is, <laughs> I don't know. This is taking a turn. <laughs> I didn't, wasn't expecting this. <laughs> Well, you're, you're, I you can't tell me that are peanuts are fucking growing in the ground. Right. I don't believe in nuts. How are peanuts I am, growing? I am the <laughs> only university educated person in this group. Mm. Yeah, but what was that degree, mate? Y- well, yeah, uh, it's half yours anyway. Um, <laughs> um, oh, I've found the answer. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> hard to find. They are, <laughs> they're literally like the seeds. Like you pull up. <clears throat> The only way I can, the best thing these look like is like uh, potatoes. Do you know when you pull a potato out of the ground? And it's like just, just Google it. How peanuts grown? Have a look. I bet you're not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange. They're like little at the end of the roots. They're just little peanuts just hanging around. Well, there we are. No, no factories them. unless you want the dry roasted variant. Because I can't imagine they grow in the ground. They just Callum. I, that was what? clearly a joke. Well, I don't so that know one, if it was. That, I don't know. I don't if it know was. If it was. No, the, fir- the first, the first bit about the factory made was was genuine, but uh, yeah, that bit wasn't. I have genuine concern really? for you. Yeah. That was my question of the week. I, anyway, I got a big tub of peanut butter the other day. Fucking chunky or butter. smooth? Smooth. Mm. I don't really like either, but you know. Sure. You don't like peanut butter? <laughs> Not really. I don't, like I don't mind it, but it's... I love I love peanuts, but um. Like Dennis with chili, they make me shit. <laughs> peanuts, yeah, I don't like taste of peanuts. I think peanuts taste like dirt. Straight up. There's dirt. nothing better than peanut butter though. It's just no, dry peanut roasted peanuts, peanuts and pint. You're wrong. You're so wrong. Watch cashews that, are the best. That's Premier League on a Thursday. Oh, cashews are boss. Cashews are <laughs> boss. Um, <laughs> guys, have you ever heard of music? No. Sorry. Uh, Tell me music. about it. Music. Do you know like how I'm speaking now? And it makes a sound. Now imagine that, and, but yeah. it's, I do. But we we give awards to it. Wow! Okay. Okay. Is it grown in the ground? Well, that would surely that would something have like to that. be reserved for something very special, though. Who anything? Oh, you may think. Like. You may think. And if we name those <laughs> right. awards after very important people in music, you'd think mm. they'd hold even more um, esteem Wait. and require esteem? even more interesting um, candidates. <laughs> um, Unrelated though, just... Wet Leg have just won an Ivan Novello <laughs> Songwriters of the Year award. Um, congrats, uh, guys! Well, well done. Well done. Guys. Yeah, really good, really good. Um, do they deserve it? 
as the, uh, the music answer, experts that we are, do they deserve it? The answer is no. Uh, we can confidently say that because, well, I don't know if you got all the way through it, you two, but I revisited this album today mm-hmm. in full, and um, it's just not very memorable besides the overly played songs. It's just a very flat Mm. flat record is the best and most succinct way I can describe this yeah it is it's it's a good album but it's well Liam uh, oh, oh, when we covered this al- album on this podcast last year Liam said I can't imagine I will ever revisit this album mm. which has rung true for all of us until, until this very day until today I also listened to it full, yeah yeah um, we we were mentioning Wet Leg the other day, and uh, I think Liam said you, you wanted to go back just out of curiosity. Yeah, I think it was because um, of this award notification. Probably, yeah. He, he and we actually we actually followed through on that. Um, I'm known to follow, follow through. through by the fools. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. go on, Carl, are you done with your thought? No, I just want to say, when we first uh, when we first reviewed the album, I gave it a six, as did Yanni, and Liam gave it a five. Mm-hmm. He was going to give it a six, but he thought I'd give it a seven, so he gave it a five. Interesting logic. Is, I stand by it. How, <laughs> <laughs> how opinions work. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I'm fine with that score. I, I'm fine with a six. Yeah, me too. I, I'm pretty... I will give it a six again I, if I, we revisit it. I think... I, I mean, I could... If we did. I could maybe push to a six. I would. It's definitely no higher than that for me. Uh, revisiting it today, um, I was surprised how much I didn't not like it. Okay, but then I think that's yeah. that's only developed as a kind of spiteful thing over the year or so since it's came come out. I I don't I don't remember not liking it. I just didn't like it. Love it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's the, the other, yeah, the yeah. other side of that. So I was surprised that I was like, okay, this is all right. But it it just does not go anywhere past that. As you say, and it's very flat. It just mm. some of the guitar tones and stuff are very boring and or annoying. The, it's repetitive. I I just don't like. I understand why people may like this album. I would say to them, there is a lot. There better are music, a lot better, better <laughs> albums that you'll probably enjoy than this album if you like this mm. kind of music. Uh, maybe people just like her voice. I mean, it's a bit ASMR-y. Maybe people are into that. Um, I feel like there's just some weird kind of cultish feeling around this band, and it's it's kind of strange. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I I still don't understand the hype. No. Like, well, I just... I don't... It, I don't it is it. funny, because, I mean, we were all guilty of when Shays Long and Wet Dream came out. We were all like, oh, my God. Yeah, but the bangers... Oh no, that's what I mean. Oh, they were. But I don't feel. I they yeah. were. I don't, I've really well, like it, the as I think we probably did bring up at the time. It has run dry yeah. now, and like I just that song does nothing for me except make me wish I got the last two minutes of my life back. Yeah. Well, Shay, Shay's long for me has kind of done full circle, and I like that again. Whereas Wet Dream, I can't get through Wet Dream anymore. See, I <laughs> have many Wet Dreams, so it's um, mm. no, I do, but this... I found out that. Hard way. <laughs> I I actually oh. have always liked Wet Dream. That's not that that actually hasn't dissipated for me. That's still my favorite song in the album. Um, where Shay's song I do find boring now. My favorite is still Angelica. I remember really liking that. I know Liam, you don't I like just, it. But yeah, just, you mentioned that about it sounded like Teenage Dream at the start. You, yeah. I think you've latched onto that, and that can't escape your mind. Maybe. Um, Maybe. Hang on. Can we just say why are you saying that like that's a bad thing? I love Teenage Dream. I love Teenage Dream. Teenage Dream is one of the best songs of <laughs> our entire existence. Youth. <laughs> okay, that's all right then. Just as long as you got that straight. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I've rediscovered that that is my favourite. I wanted to go back to it because I've been doing a purge of songs that I don't listen to because I've got oh, so much crap. I just downloaded an album. in a row we've mentioned this. Yeah, <laughs> but um, we also review music. I don't know if we've mentioned that on this pod at some point, but that's what we do um, every week. So the when I, when I was listening to it, what I was going to say, and you touched on this a bit, Liam, that I, I didn't really not like any song. I just it just wasn't like great mm. in a way. I think like I don't. 
I feel like if That's how I feel. if um I hadn't if there were no singles before this album and we were looking for an album to review and I saw this wet leg and I thought and as I often do, I just put on a few songs, skip through them, I did it for an album this week. <laughs> really lost my <laughs> <laughs> I really lost my breath then for a second. <laughs> <laughs> just shot out of me like a cannon. Um, if I was skipping through this, I would be like, nah. And so uh, that's a testament. <laughs> I don't know. It, there's nothing gripping. I I found it. Uh, I, do you know what song I actually enjoyed this time listening to it? Which oh. I don't remember at all. Piece of shit. Mm. Quite like the sound of that one. Uh, but I mean, that. I feel like that's also kind of testament to. My fault on this album. <laughs> I know it's a bad Not way to be um, when you review music as people who do that and put it online. But the fact that it's been force fed to us that, you know, they're so good, so great, makes me not like it as much as I think I would if that wasn't the case. If people hadn't come out and said, like, oh, this is like one of the best things going, really, I think I'd have more enjoyment with it. But the fact that someone, well, multiple people and things are saying, this is fantastic. This is great rock music. I just, it, it makes me not like it a certain way, well, I know, which I know is a bad way to be. And I'm trying not to be at that, but it really just has an effect on me. That I get what you mean with that, though, because for me, the, Shays Long reminds me, not in style, but of just the time it was released, of R&B by English Teacher. Hmm. Pretty sure they were released around the same time. Similar-ish style you know it's guitar music and i think i prefer r&b i don't like r&b now as a song it's funny maybe we, we, we were very much suckered in at that point um of like this kind of interesting new music we're going back to a lot of that yeah understand. um excuse me god i don't know what's going on in my throat today um but a similar point to what you're saying there yanni i completely get what you're saying for me though it's more um I feel like all of that came after the album, in my mind anyway. Like I, for me, it was like kind of like oh, I like these two singles. I think there was maybe another single before the album, and then the album came Too out, late now. and um, and the album came out, and instantly it was like ah oh, no, this isn't it. And then it was after that, and so I think it just cemented so much and kind of piled on that thought of I don't like this album. Why is everyone going on about this album wasn't great fucking for a whole year? That going back to it, I was very skeptical. Spe- oh my god, <laughs> skeptical. I think bees in there, but skeptical <laughs> about the album, which I think is why I found myself pleasantly surprised that it was all right and not the kind of mm. shit that I thought. But it's just so not worthy of no, so much. That, that's the but, point I was trying to make about English Teacher. Like they, they in my mind, they're similar songs, and it's interesting to see difference in trajectory yeah Yeah, because you know this could have easily happened to english teacher but i mean no disrespect to english teacher i saw uh, the lead singer post on twitter the other day about applying for a job at pets at home while wet leg are ivan novello songwriters of the year and in my mind there is not that much of a drastic difference in quality is my point no and I, i i completely understand why you know, even before this got again cemented and pushed on so much, people talking about them being industry plants. That was from like the first. That was when Shay's Long came out. People were like these in- industry plants. They've sung their songs everywhere, and that was before mm-hmm. it was everywhere. And now it fucking mm-hmm. is everywhere. And you know, we hear in, in Morrison's all the time, and this album <laughs> winning numerous awards, and they're touring the entire globe with Harry Styles or all fuckers. And like, it just doesn't <laughs> seem. <laughs> it just seems so bizarre, and I, I feel like you, yeah. you see videos of of the band, and they seem very normal and like very um, humble and very kind of pleased with the whole thing, because obviously you would be. Um, <laughs> but it just seems so like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like unreal. Manufactured. It just it just seems like like a fever dream sort of thing. Like mm. I imagine yeah. that's how they feel, but like it doesn't seem possible. That this, that's happened to this mm. album. As well, well, speaking proof, of like in the pudding, sorry, Yanni, the proof in the pudding, this album exists and you can listen to it, and it is not worth all those accolades. No, no. Opinion. But speaking of hype, 
Um, we were very excited for an EP by oh, oh, here we go. a gentleman that goes by the name The Dare. The EP being The Sex EP. And, oh my god, what a massive shit on my face this was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I remember I put in the chat, the EP's out, well, however long this is, 11 minutes long. So 11 minutes later, put in the same chat. Well, that was a disappointment, instant yeah. regret along those lines. So that was, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't listen to it um, besides the songs that came out with singles beforehand. So uh, just stick with Girls and Good Time and you'll have mm, a good time. good time. Yeah, well, it's very impressive that uh, an EP with four songs on, two of which are probably... I, you know, I'll go as far as to say probably two of our favourite songs of the year so far, collectively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> is so disappointing as it is. Mm. Uh, I don't even think I finished Bloodwork. Um, did any no. lyrics come in in that? No. No? Okay, brilliant. And Sex is... Um, I mean, it's just lacklustre, which yeah. is, you know... I like the vibes <laughs> of Sex. I did like the vibes. <laughs> it's It's... It's not as good a song as the other I've two, forgotten. clearly. It's not a great song. Um, <laughs> sorry, <Eddie. laughs> I realised what you said. Um, but I kind of, I kind of liked it. It just wasn't. It just didn't stand out. And then you have Bloodwork. Yeah. What? Like, I, th- is it I think so pointless ma- releasing this as an EP. I yeah. agree. I, I think maybe if he released Sex first, I mean, maybe we wouldn't have had the hype for it. Mm. But, but. But, but it's it is just girls and good time, but just lacking the excitement. Maybe blood work sounds more like something that he'd have as like the walk on song before then coming into the actual bangers. Mm. Um, because I wouldn't want to hear this during the actual set. No. Sex reminds uh, me of like really old Calvin Harris. Oh yeah, anyway. that first album. Yeah, album. that first album. Yeah, I mean that's. As much as I can give you, really. Thanks. Um, it's not the only EP, though, is it, boys? Oh, it ain't. That it's not. It's resident Callum favourite, <laughs> Opus Kink. Okay. I've. Oh, we all know how much I love Opus Kink. So much. Um, a twenty-five minute EP. May as well just do an album. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what I was getting at. Um, but I was actually, excuse me. Um. I don't remember there being four songs released for this. Um, yeah. I remember Dust and 118, but I do not remember Children or Piping Angels. Was that the fourth one? I don't remember Piping Angels. Um, Children, I think we did cover, but um, I don't really remember it individually. But I will say, I think that's my favourite off this EP. Okay. I, I would love say Children. That. Uh, sorry, Piping Angels came out two days before the EP. Oh, okay, that's one of them ones, is it? Well, I am. Fucker. Um, but yeah, it's very Opus Kink. Um, <laughs> does feel, like I've, I've said this always, uh, well, you know, with every new song they release, it does feel like an evolution of Opus Kink. But you can still tell it's Opus Kink. Um, when listening to this, I did kind of feel myself being like, fucking hell, there's another song. Because it, cause it is an EP. It just, I don't know, my mindset was expecting like 15 minutes or whatever. But I get that, yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm all for more hope is kink in my life, so I'm not saying that as a slight, just the way I thought. I wonder if the right move for hope is kink is to never release an album. Is to never release an album. Because I, I mm. don't know if I could do a full album of hope is kink. I think, yeah, it would, I think it'd run out. Of, if they can somehow do like, um, I don't feel like they've necessarily done this so far, but like little stories per EP sort of thing, or, mm. or something, or a theme. Per EP, um, I feel like that'd be a lot more interesting than trying to wrangle all of that energy and like chaos into an a full length album. Um, I feel like this might be the way forward for them. Because yeah, I because I, I enjoy I enjoyed the EP. Um, I did get the feeling as well though of like I feel like it's kind of overstaying its welcome. Going, yeah. Um, but like still so much kind of enjoyment to take from it, so many different elements and things like that. And songwriting is just like incredible. Um But yeah, I'd I'd be fine with them, I think, if they only ever released EPs. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, that was a very, very good point made there, Mr. Curly Boy. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Blur, oh my God, are back. Blair. <laughs> Blair. They are back, are yeah. back. They've uh, released a song, The Narcissist. They've also announced an album, The mm-hmm. Ballad of Darren. Great album cover. Which I'm just about to say, the <laughs> album cover... Great and so blur. It's so blur. It's so unbelievable. Blur. <laughs> I wonder if, like, I don't know, they had some competition to. I know they didn't, but like, it's almost as if <laughs> they had a competition for people to submit their blur photos. Because like, the chance that someone took this photo just seems insane. Because it is so blur. I mean, it's a actual photo somewhere in Scotland, I believe. Um, which just seems mad that this is a real picture that we're looking at. It's and incredible. not something that's been, you know, manufactured, edited. I mean, just the way that way. the chairs are like, and, yeah. and like the lifeguard chair, the the framing of that, it's so good. <laughs> it's so cool. The song, though. Speaking of, of good, um, yeah, the song. So I like this. It's growing on me more and more, uh, the more and more I listen to it. Um, it's not very blur, which, Liam, I know you've got some points to make on that, but... Um, I'm not really bothered. Um, the mm. fact that it doesn't really sound that that blurry because it's enjoyable and the chorus just gets better and better the more I hear it. Absolutely, it's got. Um, I mean, I coin this with shoegaze normally. It's got that funny feeling in my tummy vibe. Um, it's just very emotional and. Mm. I mean, I'm not too familiar with. Blur's discography in terms of deep cuts, obviously. Silly bitch. I know. Like, They're fully. the best band we've we've, we've we established. Have, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we have established this, but uh, I I do definitely want to go back and listen to um listen to the full albums. But I just think as the days go on, I love Damon Albarn more and more. <laughs> yeah. And every time he releases a new song, whether it be, I mean, I know everyone spoke about this, but the fact that this guy released a Gorillaz album two months ago and he's back with Blur and it's still to this quality. It's just testament to the man. Even if he loses his teeth on stage, fair play. What? Did you not see that video? He's singing, uh, I don't know what song it was. Um, his tooth just fell out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if he like, like the uh, like like old plated. Yeah, probably. But I don't know if he like twatted his mouth with the mic or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. But it was, it was quite amusing to watch. I watched an interview. Sorry, Liam, before you be. I watched an interview with him, and he has the biggest kettle um, whistle when he speaks. It's unreal. Mm. The la- It's so mad. It sounds like a <laughs> the Iron Family guy. Herbert the pervert. Yeah. Um, this song. So I actually feel like the more I listen to it, the more I'm putting myself off it. I, oh, um... you bitch. First time I heard it was on Joe Wiley Radio 2. She was playing. I caught like, I think it was like a few lines in when I caught it by, by chance. And then they were interviewed yeah. afterwards. It was a very weird interview. Um, but anyway, the song itself, the first time I heard it, I definitely felt like, oh, this is kind of emotional and nice. Um, and I like the chorus there. Oh, show that in your eyes. That line is really, really nice. Um, the way Damon sings that. And then, so, upon further listens, the things I'm picking up on are I really don't like Graham's call and response backing vocals. I find them annoying now. It happens too much in the song. And I said this to you guys, and I'm going to try and say it kind of verbatim, but it sounds like an off, off cut from a Gorillaz project, say Cracker Island. It does sound sort of Cracker Islandy, um, but without all the stuff musically that makes it Gorilla song interesting. Um, Don't want to interrupt you, but I am going to. On that point, um, in that interview I was just mentioning, he talks about what the song is uh, meant to be about, and it's about technology and finding, you know, losing yourself with technology, which again is touching on the subject matter of that last yeah. Gorilla's album. That was the whole point of it. So it very much lines up with what you've said there. Um, yeah, it it feels like a Gorilla song, and it very much doesn't feel like a Blur song. So it's like this really weird kind of, not even middle space. It just kind of, it just should be a Gorilla song. It doesn't it doesn't feel right. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't hate the vibe. It's very kind of not Magic Whip. Um, and I, mm. as a weirdo, was quite a fan of Magic Whip, to be honest, and still quite enjoy listening to it. Um, what a weirdo. What a weirdo. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what comes from that album. I hope it's not just a load of Gorillaz off cuts. Like, lyrically, and uh, as you said, the subject matter there, Jan, it, it does feel like a Gorilla song. So, I don't know. Maybe I mean, this is the next evolution of Blur, but it just doesn't. Right. I'd be happy with it if it is, to be honest. Yeah, I like it. So it doesn't it's not the things you mentioned there um don't detract from uh, my feelings towards the song. Mm. I've seen quite a few videos of the live shows and the obviously the classics are getting big response, but they play they opened with a new track, Saint Charles Square, I think it's called. That seems like it's okay. quite you know Quite, quite heavy and quite a bit Blair. more. Well, I mean, I can't really claim to know bar probably some of the singles, but it just seemed to be a bit more like, you know, up for it and I don't know, <laughs> not as, not as wet. But I really like the track itself. So, well, so, yeah. you say I'm wet, mate. Um, <laughs> probably not the best way to introduce this song. <laughs> um, Foo Fighters. Uh, back with another single from their upcoming album. Um, the song is called Under You. And there's also other news alongside this. They did a uh, rehearsal recording for their upcoming shows that they're going to do. In that, they've announced a replacement uh, touring drummer. I don't know if it's going to go further than the tour. Um, it's going to be Josh Freeze. Or Freeze? I think it's Freeze, to be honest with you. Um, he's got some accolades, that fella. I watched, I watched that some... video earlier, which was quite funny That's... with Chad Smith and Tommy Lee and yeah. whoever the other one was. He um, was from Tool. He was a Tool. Um, live from Yanni. <laughs> we've heard it there. Um, but yeah, I looked up this Josh Freeze and he's just been involved in everything, really, hasn't he? Very Massive prolific. bands. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's noted as a session drummer. Um, well, I'm just having a quick look on. We're here. Over 400 records he's appeared on. Wow. wow. So yeah, but um that the live performance, well, you know, the rehearsal they did, I mean he's he's got what it takes, he's got yeah. the energy, he's fucking mental and he he whacks them some like <laughs> Taylor and Dave do when they play drums. Yeah. Taylor did. Um so yeah, and talking of the song, back to that, they did play that. Um it made me have a greater appreciation for the track. Um, obviously, touching lyrics, um, I feel like maybe it's a bit too heavy-handed with, obviously, what it's getting at. Um, um, I think that was a problem with the other song as well. Like, it sort of... I don't know if that, along with the melody, is maybe pushing it a bit too much for me into, like, cheese territory. Um, however, the like the main riff um, I like and the general vibe of it I like. And the chorus has... A lot of energy. Yeah, I think we we all had that same point about the last track where we thought musically it's getting back to the Foo Fighters. I mean, I don't know how big a fan you are, Liam, but you know, the Foo Fighters we all prefer. Mm. I mean, something yeah. that isn't from whatever the fuck that last Medicine. album was. Medicine. Medicine. Oh my god. Shite. Pure shite. So so bad, uh, but yeah, I th- I do feel like this song suffers with the same. Uh, it's just a little. Bit, it's just not very. I mean, it's hard to say. It's it's just not very nuanced, and it's just very like. Yeah, smack you in the face what it's about. Which if that's what they're going for, that's what they're going for. You're not expecting like you know. I don't know. I think the difference. <laughs> I don't know. This, now to finish that. Go on. This didn't feel as um as heavy handed to me as the last one, because I feel like on the last one it was trying to be a bit more poetic about it, whereas this is just very kind of straight to the point, and so it doesn't feel as I I don't know if I'm, if where I'm going with this. I, I feel like I've lost my okay. train of thought completely, but it doesn't feel um I didn't feel the cheese factor of this because it just was telling me what it wanted to tell me, and that was it, and I was fine with that. Um, if that makes sense. And musically, yeah, I think it's 
I think I've enjoyed listening to this one. I've listened to this one quite a few times. Um, oh, and like, I am surprised. I'm not a massive Foo Fighters fan, as in like I've never really listened to Foo Fighters a full album. Um, but I know all the hits, and I enjoy most <laughs> of them. I've just never really have taken the time to listen to um, anything else. Um, and this definitely feels like those classics. And yeah, I'm looking mm. forward to the album. Really, I think so far, especially musically, it's been two for two. Um, mm. And you know, I can't imagine the whole album's gonna be the same subject matter. No, maybe they're just getting those ones kind of out of the way, or or they're doing it purposely as a kind of tribute. Um, but yeah, yeah, I uh, yeah, I hope the rest of the album lives up to it. Um, what they've released so far. Um, it's a couple of. Um, not so very good track to me. Um, I I will okay. want to touch on because um, Ben Howard again mm. releasing the song "Walking Backwards." It just doesn't interest me, and it's it's getting to the point where it's annoying me now. Yeah, because <laughs> I am every time I listen to a new Ben Howard song, I go back and listen to all Ben Howard, and I think, "Fuck me, he was so good," and I I just. I can't. I just can't enjoy anything new. His his voice sounds weird. Like he's, he's the way he's approaching melodies now is very strange. And it it works with the song, but like I don't like the song. Let me go next because I feel like you were more akin to Yanni Sosa. Yeah, no, I mean, I I just absolutely agree. Really, um, I just can't get used to it. Like I don't mind listening to it, but it's just not that interesting. It's not inviting me into listening to it at all. Um, and you can still hear the genius in there somewhere, but it's not really coming out to play. <laughs> <laughs> See, with this and the last track that was released, I put them on in the background when I was in work and I just let it play. And I've really enjoyed them both. But I do also agree, when the time comes for us to sit down and listen to the album, I probably won't enjoy it, which is strange. Um, But I do try and just disassociate the fact that this is Ben Howard and just kind of enjoy it for what it is rather than comparing it to stuff he's never going to be able to recreate because it's just that good. Um, But the song itself is quite fun. I quite enjoy it. Um, There's a bit of uh, melody in the chorus that comes back. Um, I'm trying to get to it. It's just the way he sings. <laughs> I can't. I can't think what it is. I'm not going to like. But I really enjoy that. That's one thing that sticks out for me. But I agree. His voice is a little bit grated on this song. Mm, just a weird inflection he has on certain mm-hmm. things. That's mm-hmm. yeah, doesn't uh, rub me the right way. Um, what is the right way? The right way. Well, voices that I like. Well, there's actually two here. Uh, that I'll touch on. Um, I'll start with the very, very positive. Um, Do Nothing. Oh. Releasing the song Moving Target. I have, in my notes, I put nice in full caps <laughs> and an exclamation mark. I am wow. shouting <laughs> this from the rooftops. Like the biscuit. Yes, like the biscuit. Um, it was something different, I felt like. Um, I feel like we've not sort of seen this side of doing nothing before. If we have, I can't remember it. And the vocals aren't doing that annoying thing that I've taken the piss out before. I'm not going to do now. Um, and I feel like the song actually allows the vocals to shine on this so much. Um, I just really like this song. Yeah, I agree. It's the, it's the best they've done since Glue Land, in my opinion. Um, it does kind of give me a bit of hope for this album again because I'd kind of mentally checked out. Um, But it still doesn't really give me the excitement factor that some of the earlier tracks do. But, you know, I mean, I don't know. I've got more hope for the album now. Yeah, um, I agree with all those points. I don't really have anything to add. (laughs) I also enjoy that. Um, Interesting to see what the rest of the album's like because... I don't know, I don't feel like this is very similar to the ones that have come out so far from this album. So, which way is it going to go, kind of thing. 
Mm, hopefully um, more like this. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. I did not know. Um, Other one that I uh, was surprised that I like the voice by, um, well, I'm probably going to butcher it, is it Grian or Grian? Grian. Grian. Grian mm. Chatton with, and it's there's a spelling mistake on Notion, Fairlies. Um, What's the same Notion? Oh. Fairies. Spelling That's a bit of auto correct. Yeah. Uh, 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 won't blame me. I mean. Sorry, autocorrect. Yeah. Um, I really like his voice in the lower register um, oh. that he sings in throughout the verses. Uh, he does go back to his like normal sort of. Uh, uh, what the fuck is the name of the band? Oh my god! Fontaine's DC. Fontaine's DC. <laughs> Fontaine's DC. He does go back to the uh, that join like the chorus, but to me the verses are like the nicest part of this. It is one minute too long though. The song. <laughs> I think it's got a weird structure. If, if oh, yeah? It's got like a verse, chorus, Talk double verse, chorus. I, I don't know. It just feels weird in the middle. It, it just doesn't just kind of feels weird to me. But the song itself, I I actually really like. Um, it's I think it's much better than the other one that came out. Um, mm. I still don't. I just still don't understand why though. What mm. what's going on? Like the, I don't really see why this couldn't have been a Fontaine song, even exactly how it is. I mean, I understand that he's probably he's written this himself, so it's a song. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, just something about that scene is interesting to me. I'd like, I wish I could know more about why. Well, hasn't um, hasn't the guitarist or something had a baby. stopped touring for a while? Had a baby, yeah. So maybe that's why he just maybe, maybe had itchy feet and he just wanted to get it out. I don't know. Um, but I was saying to Yanni when Liam was having a. A pre-recording breakdown, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just, while I do enjoy the song a million times more than the last one that was released by Green, I just don't really care. <laughs> I feel the same with most Fontaine's DC stuff. Um, even going back to, I mean, this is purely my fault, but Jackie Down the Line, I loved that song when that came out. I don't care for that much anymore if i'm honest it's probably just overplayed fair enough but i just i don't know it just just for me it just doesn't hit the spot well it's a hard disagree with you but um there you I, i'll take your opinions we've had another ab, ab, we've had another absconder this week from Ooh, the band Wund- wonder horse wonder horse jacob slater's um Oh, well, that changes my opinion on this song. <laughs> He's got a solo <laughs> I'm joshing. Solo, solo album coming out in the next few weeks called Mr. Pinky or something. <laughs> it is called Peep. It's called something like that. I can't think what it's called. It probably says in this picture, actually. Uh, Pinky, I love you, it's called. And this song's called Kissing, <laughs> Kissing Booth. Now, I'm going to start here and say I love this song. And I'm sure it wasn't hard for anyone to guess. Um, I I just I think it's great. I think the finger picking is brilliant. His voice I already love from Wonder Horse. Song structure is great. The melodies are great. Uh, somewhere between like Elliot Smith, Fleetwood Mac, and like um, what was the other person I had in mind? I don't know, mate. I don't know, but it's, it's going to annoy me that I've <laughs> forgotten. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's great. Um, oh, I'm sorry, to Sufjan you. Stevens. Sorry, that was your person. Sufjan Stevens. Well, Sufjan. Before, just I'll go because if you're gonna, you know, change it, I'll just. I um, I actually really liked it as well, Liam, and um, I had no idea it was um, one of those Wonder Horse people. You clearly didn't listen to um, Wonder it's Horse. It's the then. Wonder Horse first. The guy. I think actually yeah. Wonder Horse is a solo project. It's just yeah, no, I band. think it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I. I do really love this song. It's beautiful. It's like a proper slow dance song. It's really emotional. Really, yeah, it's really emotional. I've got it on now. It really it is. gets me. It really gets me <laughs> in the same way that Sufjan Stevens songs on Call Me By Your Name get me and the Elliot Smith songs on Good Will Hunt and get me. It's just the oh. same thing. It's probably just a finger picking style, but just like the relationship between that and the vocals. Okay, well, I thought it was pleasant enough, but at the time, I put a doubt I'd revisit this. So, if you're so buzzing about it, you two, then I might have to revisit it. I mean, it's a type of music you might not be interested in. 
So, I mean, that's fine. If you still don't, tell me if you don't like what I feel. <laughs> but, like, I, um, I do like this kind of music. And so, yeah, you do. This hits all the marks for me. Your little I pre ordered the album. So, that's how I uh, Liquid what? cash or not? Straight liquid, yeah. Wow. Oh, dollar dollar bills, from, from the horse's mouth. Straight from the horse's mouth. Um, Mouths of babes. Talking of um, finger picking. Oh, this, on, is a, please. this is a hard uh, segue here. Uh, and I don't think I've really listened to this, but I listened to the new Paul Simon album today. Oh, yeah. Seven Psalms. Quite an interesting album. It's um, it's all one track on streaming, and it's supposed to it's supposed to be listened to as as, as a full piece. Um, so you can only listen to it in one. It's kind of split into oh, seven. They're all kind of cuts throughout. They're kind of there's a lot of um talk of god and religion and love and life and death and all the rest of it on the on the album i think it's very nice um it's paul simon there's a very high level of quality that's assumed there um oh. and i really enjoyed it um but what one thing i will say that it got me yeah. i kind of hit me a little hard when i was listening to it it feels like um you want it darker or black star it feels like a good buy album. Um, Very strong, similar vibes to. See, Black Star um, was like a couple of days before Bowie died, and then You Want a Dark was a couple of weeks before Leonard Cohen died. And they both, and I mean, this is probably influenced by the fact that that happened straight after, but even at the time when those albums came out, felt profound in a certain way that was kind of um, very much validated shortly afterwards. Um, and I don't know, this just, this album hits that same spot and i'm concerned is what i'll say oh well i hope not i hope i'm dead wrong but it definitely has that level of kind of profoundness and authority over you as a listener to be um to you should listen to this kind of thing um okay but yeah i I can't like suggest it as like you guys are gonna love it because i don't know if you will (laughs) or anyone um but i think it's 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 a very well written album I um, listened, well, I started to because it's an hour and six minutes in total with 20 songs, so I didn't really... So unnecessary. Brain yeah. it in, Paul. I, uh, no, 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 I'm not talking yeah, about that. Yeah, I was going to say, I, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> I started to listen to The Glow Part 2 by The Microphones because Fantano released a ranking that. video, and he's mentioned this, and I've seen him mention it a couple of times, yep. I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to listen to this. And I was enjoying myself, and I feel like, Liam, you will enjoy this. I don't know about you, Cal. I've but. gone to listen to the microphones before. I don't think it was that album. Um, but I remember liking what I heard. So Yeah, maybe give I'll it a go. It's, yeah, it's very uh, rough around the edges. But I, I think maybe coming off the back of listening to Bonnie Vare recently, um, I'm sort of eased into that style um, where it wasn't that jarring. I've only got two other tracks. Sorry, can I just I say something? No. That album was released on 9-11. The Glow That's, Party. Uh, uh, why did you feel the need? Because I just saw it on Spotify and I just find things like that fascinating. Because obviously that's such a big day in history that this someone was like, what, yeah, what this al- someone woke up early, me? put this album on, was like, yeah, this is great. Yeah. Turn the telly on. <laughs> and uh, life has <laughs> changed. <laughs> that wasn't funny. Uh, no, um, but it reminded me of some videos I've watched on Instagram recently, reels, where it's like, you just ask her out, dude, what's the worst thing that can happen? And they, <laughs> Have you not seen these videos? No. They, no okay, well, I'll, if I find one, I'll send it to you. But, um, the joke yeah, is that it cuts to the telly and it's the news announcement of that. And it's like, that is the worst thing that could have <laughs> happened in that scenario. Um, <laughs> there you go, that's a what? joke. Two more well, tracks well, yeah, to talk to. I'm going to get to it. I'll move on. Don't worry. Segwaying is happening. Uh, Water from your eyes with the song 14. We've covered there are the two, yep. two tracks. Yeah, two tracks. And 14 is the latest one. I enjoyed this one. Um, from, what can, from what I can remember <laughs> of the <laughs> <laughs> other ones, this felt yeah, very course. different. <laughs> of course. Um <laughs> But I felt like this was would have been a fantastic closer. But I've I checked the tr- uh, track list 
and it's not the closer, so they better smash it with the actual last song. Mm. But um, yeah, I found myself enjoying this. I was in quite a mellow mood uh, today while I was listening to all these songs. So the maybe the the slower ones or the you know less heavier ones, uh, I found myself enjoying a lot more. But uh, what did you guys think? Did you listen to this or not? Um, I really like this, and I, I really mm. like the Good. the the kind of more mellow vibe of this one. While also being very foreboding, uh, I'm very looking forward to this album. I think it's out next week, is it? Um, Ooh, okay. like three tracks that are just kind of in another mindset. It's like, what the fuck are these songs? What is mm. going on? There's nothing going on. This is just noise. And for some reason, they've really hit the spot. They've really they've done what they're trying to do here. Um, and yeah, this is a great kind of um, showing of another string on the bow. You know what I mean? It's uh, mm-hmm. another side to walk from your eyes, which is it's solid. Uh, that's a rock. I completely agree. I did kind of feel m- myself getting like a bit agitated towards the end. Um, I feel like in terms of what Yanni said, if it was a closer on an album, I'd completely get it. But as a single, I was a bit like, fucking hell, come on now. Um, but overall, the actual vibe of the track was was a hit with me yeah i like it and i'm very excited for the album very happy that it's next week now you saw me he's buzzing and the last one i want to talk about and i think this should just be the closer to be honest that we uh, the last one we talk about um, speak for yourself <laughs> uh, well what what else do you want to talk about then well well there's, there's probably three more yeah i mean is there i'm happy th- there's there's at least more than one that i would talk about here so yeah absolutely do you want Are to you finish even... on your one do you want to finish on your one the problem is i might say it now and then well, no, we know, we know, so we, we know, know which one. We know, we know which one. Yannis. We all know. Even so, then it's not King Cruel. Which oh, we'll talk okay, about right. Now. Okay, it's definitely not um, King Cruel. Let's talk about that then. Yeah, the song is "If Only It Was Warmth." Um, if only uh, it was a good song. Am I right? <laughs> this is such an album track. Yep. Like, why yep. really? Pure fodder. Mm. I'm sure it'll work well within the album. King Cruel's albums. You know, as you guys know, I've recently listened to the last couple. And there's a lot of tracks <laughs> like this. That. There's so much <laughs> smugness in the way you said that. Uh, you know, <laughs> very bizarre. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of tracks like this that just kind of fill the vibe and the atmosphere of the album. It, it just does not need to be a single. Sorry, Archie, mm. but do better. Mm, completely agree. Um, next, I'd like to talk about the Backs of Jury track. Uh, yeah. Celebrate me. Uh, yeah, I don't really have much to say, so I don't. I'm, I'm very sad that I've introduced this. Yeah, no, I but no, no, but no, no, no. You know the rules. But, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> what? But um, I'm finally coming around to back to the jury like properly, Liam. And it was on okay. this song. Yeah, no, I, I'm fascinated what? at this. How? Yeah. Have you, so have you gone back? I don't yet, know. Or, no, 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 uh, no. I can't. So like, no, this is insane. No, I know. But I don't think it was based on this song. I think it is based on Aylesbury Boy. Well, when I saw that this was released, I was like, I was excited and I stopped what I was doing to put it on, which I need to now translate that okay. mentality to going back and listening to the I, old stuff. Which I've I'm aware got of. a Baxter playlist. Of yeah, no, I've, I've got it saved. Song. I've got it saved. Listen yeah, I know. <laughs> listen to it. I yeah, I know. It's called Bax. I mean, you should <laughs> just go and listen to the albums. I mean, I, I enjoy this song. <laughs> I enjoy this song. I've enjoyed everything from this album so far. I'm looking forward to the album. It's a very different vibe, I feel, to most of his other mm. stuff. Um, but, like, <laughs> there's so much more. <laughs> there's so much more. You oh, yeah, no, I'm, f- I'm fully aware of that. Um, but I'm in the mindset now where I feel like I'm ready to do it because do it. I am ex- I'm, 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 I'd actively excited for when new things come. Do we know? Do we know when this album's coming out? The new Baxter album. Do we? It's because no. you should really get a full disco listening discog. Get them second all of in. June. Second of June. Second plenty of time, of mate. You've got uh, you know just over okay. a week or whatever. I'll whack it on in work tomorrow. Start from the beginning. The first whack. album's quite different to the rest, um, okay. in kind of tone. But you should listen to it anyway, and there are some. Absolute gold among his discography. I'll tell you that. And it's all in the Bax playlist. If you want to check it out, Bax on, on Spotify, Liam Godfrey's pod <laughs> playlist. Please check him out. Liam <laughs> Godfrey's pod. I, yeah, I didn't like this song, to be honest with you. That's why I was very surprised when you said what you just said. The bass line I enjoyed and the lyrics were good. Just the song itself, I just, it didn't, 
Didn't gel with it. He's going for a very different thing on this album. So far, anyway. Like the very it seems very leads. honest and open. I was going to say lyrically and everything. Yeah. It seems very. It is. It just kind of feels very kind Isn't of me? like matter of fact, like chatting. It doesn't feel very s- song structured. Lee, done. <laughs> that makes sense. Like the f- the singles yeah. that have come out, I don't feel like what he's saying. He's trying to put into a song. It just feels like he's saying stuff, and I like it. It's interesting. Um, but yeah, it's it's different for sure. Right. Let's um. Can I have you got anything else you want to talk about? I've got one more song I want to talk about. Um, well, there's um, the Kendrick remix of the Beyonce track, America Has a Problem. Is that what it is? I've got... Yeah, it just stonks. Okay. I love this. Um, well, <laughs> I don't, okay. that's, uh, that's pretty can little hard, I, I, can I, um, can I yeah, I'm sure, but I, that's an nice really like it. I, can I start? I, so I wasn't aware this was a Kendrick remix. It makes a lot more sense. My problem with this song is... Why is there so much Beyonce? <laughs> so you've answered that now. <laughs> you've answered that. That makes sense. Because like I feel like Kendrick comes in strong, he does a great job. Beyonce does a great job. But then it just keeps doing that job. And keeps <laughs> doing that job for many minutes. Um and I feel like there was no it wasn't split properly, but it makes sense obviously if he's just been added on afterwards. But the my problem is the music for this song. So forget about, you know, Beyonce and Kendrick have both kind of performed their duties reasonably well. <laughs> no one else has. Like, the music is so dull on this song. Like, the beat is well, poor. Did you listen to the album that she released? No. Okay, well, that's pretty much <laughs> just this. It's pretty much this. Shite. Yeah. Didn't it win awards? Uh, probably. Take them back. Well, I think Beyonce sounds good on this album. I, I, it's if side I don't not heard. If side I've not heard. Um, but like this album that you've not heard, you think she sounds on good this it? song? The Beyonce <laughs> song, I meant to say song. <laughs> but like I say, it's just too much of her. Um, yeah, weird, weird. I feel like it would have really benefited from a some like Kendrick call and response. She, he just needs At to be some in point, a bit just more. more Kendrick, or yeah, spread yeah. out in a, a better distribution. Because, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I went back and listened to the original song, and it's literally just he's tagged on the front of the song. That's it. Mm. The rest of the song is. Oh, that original song. song is so boring. Then. Yeah. Because like I appreciate what Beyonce is doing <laughs> yeah. here, but it's because it's with Kendrick. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's... I d- I didn't really see the point. If I'm honest with you, I saw less of a point when I went back and revisited the old song as well. I just thought like there's. No need for this. The original's not that good. This doesn't really do much. There's, it's a waste of Kendrick, if I'm honest. For sure. Fair. He does what he can, but it's yeah, it's just pointless. Is that all we want to talk about before we talk about the the last one? Go on. Uh, I I'm happy. Yeah. Daft Punk, Julian Casablancas, and The Void with the song Infinity Repeating. This is. Fantastic. Oh. Yeah, boy. Come it's beautiful. It. I feel like you weren't so praiseful. I wasn't so praiseful. I liked it, but I wasn't as praiseful as I now am. And the reason for that I've established is because I was listening to it through mm. broken AirPods. Um, so I had to replace the earbuds. Oh, nightmare story. I didn't ever told you this. One of the, the rubber bits went to pull out a thing, stuck in my ear. Oh, I've had that. Uh, I've had terrifying. that many times. I've, I've had to panic. pull one out of your ear. Oh, well. I remember. There we go. Yeah, it the, was. The uh, panic is pleasant. real, isn't it? It's like insane. Oh, it's, like suddenly, I feel like, like I'm drowning. This is. It's like well, there's only one way for this to go further in my ear. <laughs> That's the only thing I think about. <laughs> it's <a> horrible situation. <laughs> Should to find something sharp to somehow dig it out. Oh, oh well, yeah, I managed to do it, but then it just rotated in my ear. So like it was the opposite like, side, and I was like, well, "This is the end. This is the end of my ear." Uh, anyway. So I've managed to replace him, listen to it again, and I got everything. Got all the sounds in my face, and it was it's just so nice. I love Julian's voice. What a voice he has. What a man. Um, and it's just, it's like the perfect goodbye. What I find, uh, not talking about the song though, um, at this point, what, what I find interesting is that you don't listen for your big old speakers. Well, why you've depended on your tiny little earpods? I'm, I've uh, I've come to realise over the years that um, to fully enjoy music, I do have to wear headphones for it because then it's 
it's so direct. It's so in yeah. my my ears at that point. It's blocking everything else out, I suppose. Well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, also, the room's not well treated, so it's oh, someone needs to treat that room. Get a doctor in. Th- this song is. I've said this to you guys, haven't I? I've said it. No, I don't know you're about. I've said it. It's 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 just a beautiful goodbye. It's a farewell from a friend. You know, it feels oh, fond farewell. a fond farewell. To a friend. To a friend. From a friend. Um. It just feels so perfect as like the the final output from Daft Punk and Julian being involved in it also makes perfect sense because he was part of probably one of their best songs ever. Their best song. Yeah, I'm confident in saying that. Um, And yeah, I think this song's great. I think the video's great as well. I think that really adds to the experience. If you've not watched it, then please do with the song. Um. It's great. It's kind of. It's not an emotional song. It doesn't feel like. I've not really paid attention to what Julian's saying, but, um, but it made me feel emotional, just because it's like yeah. this is it. This is, this is it. Close the book, and this is the last little goodbye. Without them knowing, it's probably going to be the last goodbye. Um, special. Callum doesn't like this song. I mean, no, I'm. Hate it. I really like it, but I can't say anything more poignant than the two of you have uh, said. So I'll leave it there. That's good. It did. Um, it did make me go back and listen to Random Access Memories. Um, okay. And I still only like the songs that I liked originally. I I, I don't understand the hype no. for this album and the accolades it got. Um, really not deserving of it in my opinion. No. But um, Cat L- Luffy is the song of the summer. Um. <laughs> Lose Yourself to Dance, another bop. Oh, yeah, what a tune. What a slapper. Mm. And, of course, Instant Crush is is the best Daft Punk song ever um, to ever exist in the world. It's just fantastic. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> so, uh, we end on a high. Hi. Boys. Hi. We do? That's it? Um, I think that's it. That's what I want to say. Not me. No. Right. I've had a great time. And I've just found out that uh, doing a little Wikipedia search on Julian Casablancas, um, Rick Rubin has recorded a new album with them, which I'm sure you know, Yanni. Yeah. But I'm excited for that because I did enjoy the new Abnormal. Yeah. And, you know, other stroke songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all love a good stroke here on Fools and Hell Podcast. No. Oh, dear. Especially oh. Margaret Thatcher. Yay, Goodbye. Six, and, uh, enjoy oh. a healthy stroke tonight. Some different strokes. friends. Uh, different strokes, different blokes. See ya.